Welcome everyone. Can you believe it's already week five of the business management capstone class? Hopefully your teams are all starting to gel by now. It seems like it at least from the assignments I have graded so far. So keep up the great work. As always though, if you do have any concerns, definitely reach out to me when it comes to any team members. Let's go ahead and just jump right into the week five assignments. So I'm going to click on the weekly modules content area and access the week five folder. As always at the top, we have the learning objectives for the week. Next, we have the assignment summary. Of course, right now you're already reviewing the week five overview video. Next, you're going to want to make sure you read chapter three, review the PowerPoint presentations for chapter three, review the Learn Smart documentation, the student quick tips and best practices if you still have any questions about Learn Smart. Uh, so far, I believe everyone's got the hang of it though. The assignments for the week, you're going to have the course participation, which is a discussion board on social media and business evaluation. The Chapter 3 Learn Smart, the Global Simulation Year 7 Report, and the Global Simulation Decisions for Year 7. Last but not least, we have the Chapter 3 Quiz. Okay, now I'm going to scroll down. As always, you're going to see the course content information for that module, which this one's Module 5. Next, we have the Course Participation, Social Media, and Business Evaluation Assignment which is basically just a discussion board. The topic is going to be social media and networking apps effect on a company's external environment. Your initial post will contain what social media are you utilizing? What methods of networking do you apply for business? How can these platforms have a positive and negative impact on a company? What are some other external forces that can influence a company's outcome? So that's all going to be within your initial post. Step two is where you're going to review the other posts that your peers have created. And step three, you want to want to make a comment on at least two other posts. Make sure the replies are engaging. Uh, so far, I think most students are making them engaging. They're not just putting great job or I agree. So keep it up. Uh, fantastic job. This is Capstone. So obviously I do expect a lot. So let me go ahead and scroll down here. Next, we have the chapter three, Learn Smart. Like I stated before, it sounds like everyone's got a good handle on that. Then the Chapter 3 quiz. Next, we have the Global Simulation Year 7 report. Now, I did have a, a, a few emails about the Year 6 report. So the good thing is, once you kind of get the gist of how the report should be formatted, then you really just start focusing on uh, the information that actually is within the reports. Make sure you address all of the five different areas within the Year 7 report. And if you have any questions when it, when it comes to grading, make sure you review the rubric for the year seven report that's attached to the assignment. And as always, you know, continue to feel free to reach out. If you do have questions about the reports, I will always make comments within any of the assignments that I grade if I deduct any points. So make sure you're reviewing those comments, especially when it comes to the yearly reports. Next, of course, we have the Global Simulation Year 7 Decisions, which you should be very familiar with by now, how to accomplish that. Um, and it seems like at least everyone is able to get into Globus. They're able to make decisions. Now it becomes, are they the right decisions? Uh, so make sure you are communicating with your team members. The more you communicate, the better the outcome will be, I'm sure. So now let's go ahead and jump in Globus and review the outcome of Year 6. Okay, by now everyone should be able to access the yearly reports. So first we're going to cover the year six scoreboard. As you can see, team B is leading in charge with 105. Then we have team F right behind them with 102. A little bit of drop off with team A to 95. And if we look all the way down at the bottom, we have team K at 69 for the weighted average score. What I would say to you is I'm not concerned yet because this is just based off of one year of decisions. So depending on what decisions you made, it may take several years to kind of reap the benefits of those decisions. So I'm not really going to be down on, you know, team E or I or K because it will be based on, you know, the outcome of the decisions they're currently making. What I will look at is once we jump to year seven and see that outcome is, was there an increase? If there's not an increase and you stay steady or you drop, then yeah, that's where the concern comes in. So 
If you look uh, below the year six scoreboard, we have the game two date scoreboard. And of course, it's the exact same since it's only based on one year so far. So the game to date is just based on year six. So all the information is the exact same. So moving on, let's go look at page two of the reports here. Return on equity. Okay, as you can see, Team B is the uh, highest so far at 26.3. But you also do have Team A, C, F, G, and H, meaning the expectations of the investors. So great job. And like I said, then again, with Team D and E and I, J, and K, I'm not too concerned yet. It's just one year. Uh, I'm just continuing looking for that increase. So we'll just move on to the stock price for right now. Stock price, we have Team B as the highest, so great job, Team B. We have A, C, F, G, and H, all meeting expectations. Excellent. Then, we, then again, we do have D, E, I, J, and K, uh, not yet meeting expectations, just one year. So just keep an eye on it though. Make sure you improve it. At least continue go, going up. You might not meet expectations within year seven, but as long as you're moving forward, that's what you want to look at. Next, we have credit rating. So as you can see, we have uh, several B pluses, a couple of A minuses. Like I said in previous videos, I'm not too concerned. I, I, my guess would be by year eight or nine, everyone will probably be at least within the A minus um, range. So, moving on to image rating, it looks like everyone's meeting expectation. We have a three way tie for best, which is team A, C, and H. So, great job. Uh, it looks like everyone kind of has a handle on it. Team F, and now I'm sure you'll get it together uh, by probably year eight or nine. So, no worries as long as you continue moving forward. That's what I'll be looking at. Okay, so now let's look at the competitive report for North America. Like I said, uh, we're not going to cover all the regions. I just choose one just so to make sure you're familiar with the reports. So with the North America for the cameras, as you can see, the highest priced camera is at 300 for Team K. And then you see, well, what's the lowest one? You have C and D at 225, and you have H at 215. So H actually has the lowest one. Okay. The PQ ratings, they range from what, 5.3 with the average of 4.5. Uh, you got your brand reputation. It looks like everyone's at 70. Number of models, most are at 2. There's a couple at 3. Then if we look at the retail support and the advertising budget and website displays, it looks like it, we have different values there, so you make, make sure you analyze these numbers to determine if you're, you know, in the right position or not. Uh, sales promotion, we have four two twelve for Team C, one eight four one 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 ten for K. So we have a, a big range there. We won't know who's right or wrong until probably a few more years. Your warranty period. Same thing, big range from anywhere from 70 to 90 days to 120 to 360 within there. Then we jump down to market share. So the highest market share is Team C. They do not have the lowest price though, as you can see. They have 225 as a price. The lowest one is Team H at 215. So being the lowest is not always the one that has the largest market share. It's based on the PQ rating, number of models, so on and so forth, discounts. So just keep that in mind. Okay, moving down to the drone segment for North America. It looks like the lowest price here we have is 1050. The highest is 1300 or I'm sorry, the highest actually is 1500. Okay. So we have a little bit of range there. Uh you see where the discount to online retailers, you have anywhere from 10, 12, 14, 15%. PQ ratings, the average is 4.6. Uh, number of models, a few of you have just one. Most of you have two. Uh, online retailers, everyone's at 36. And then, again, make sure you look at the website display, search engine, advertising, retailer recruitment, so on and so forth. Uh, the warranty period, you got 60 days, you got 120 days, 360 days, uh, so on and so forth. And then if we jump down to the market share here, it looks like uh, Team H has the largest market share at 10.6. Now keep in mind, this is just one year. Uh, so the data doesn't show you too much yet. Uh, 
there's enough uh, to maybe change some of your decisions, but um, I don't think any one team probably needs to make a, a drastic change uh, for the most part. Uh, the only one that kind of stands out were that it seems that Team J took a loss, so I, I'd be just a little bit concerned with that, but not too much, though. There's still plenty of time to make changes. Okay, last but not least, we have the charts at the bottom. You see where the AC camera segment, you see where Team E is kind of leading the charge when it comes to sales promotion and advertising. And you look like for the price and PQ rating, Q is a little bit higher than A. For the drone segment, you have H as the highest when it comes to search engine advertising. But then you see K is the highest when it comes to the price and PQ uh, rating. So you want to take in all this data and try to see if you need to make changes or not. A common question I've received in email is, do we have to make changes to all the screens? No. If you feel confident with your decisions, you don't have to make change for the sake of change. Meaning that if you feel like you're doing well, you may tweak it a little bit. You might you know, make a few different decisions on uh, a couple screens, but that doesn't mean you have to change every option on every screen. If you're doing well, you know, maybe you only change one or two decisions. If you're not, maybe you change them all. It's really based on how you're doing. So keep that in mind. And as always, if you have any questions, reach out to me. Most of you have been fantastic about doing that and um, keep it up. So, well, that's all I have for this overview for this week. Um, as always, let me know if you have any questions. Have a great week.